Good morning, continuing our walkthrough of review exercise one, starting with question nine. In question nine, we're asked to factorise the following expression. x squared minus 10x plus 16. Now there are many different factorisation methods that you'll be aware of. The first I would look for is are there any common factors? In this case there are not. And then I would look to see if there was a difference of two squares or anything like that. But before I jump as far as the formula, I'd look for paired brackets. In this case, if I have x minus 2 and x minus 8, minus 2 times minus 8 gives me positive 16, and the sum of these two gives me minus 10. If I was to expand that, I would get back to the original expression, and that's a good way of testing my factorization. And that's all we had to do in part A. In part B, we're asked to do a little bit more. In part B, we are asked to solve a more complicated expression, or rather a more complicated equation, that's given as this. Now, you might notice that this is very similar to what we had up above there. We've got this 10, and that 10, and that's 16, so rather that minus 10, minus 10, and 16. But what we've got in place of x is h to the power y. Over here, though, we've got h to the power 2y. And this actually is the first thing that we need to tidy up. I can rewrite this term as h to the power y squared because y times 2 would give me 2y. Continuing to write out the expression, it now looks much more similar to our original equation. And that goes back to the wording of the question. In the question, it says, hence or otherwise. That hence means using what you've already done, solve this. The otherwise there is in case you want to do it another way because you haven't spotted their trick. Here we've got 8y squared. Here we have x squared. Here we have minus 10 to the 8 to the power y. Here we have minus 10x and 16. Effectively, we've got a comparison we can make between x being equal to 8y. I could make that substitution and swap these out for x's at this point and then change them back to 8 to the power y's at the end. However, I think that might result in more working than is needed. So what I'm going to do is since this and this are in the same form, I'm going to use this form but with the 8 to the power y. I've used the factorization from part A in part B, but instead of it being x's, it's 8 to the power y's. But that's valid because these 8 to the y's are in the same position as these x's, and these 8 to the power y's are in the same position as these x's. All that remains now is to solve. This bracket would equal 0, or this bracket could equal 0 to make this equation true. So let's start with this one. Rearranging and solving, what power do I have to raise 8 to to get 2? We're not going to go into logarithms just yet, because you can do this by inspection. I know that the cube root of 8 is 2, and a power of a third would give me that cube root. 
Taking the second bracket, rearranging, it's clear that y must be 1. And there we have solved the equation using the factorization from part A and given our solutions for the value of y in this equation.